get raised in this life Because they told us we was black when we really didn't realize And I don't wanna be no plug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no thug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no hitter, that's all they talking about First and foremost, I'm gonna say Kahala Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right, that's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, and the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. What, what, what was he asking you, brother? I didn't really catch what y'all were talking about. Just about tattoos. Tattoos? What, what's your stance on that? We can get them, it's good. Yeah? Do you believe in God, though? I do. So if we believe in God and God has a certain expectations of us, are we gonna, for example, your job? Right? Say your job tells you, okay, you can't do this. Your job tells you not to do it. You're not going to do it though, right? Because that's what your job requires of you to be there. Okay. But if. You have to get some kind of Okay. So, but uh, that's what I'm saying. There's regulations, though, right? There's certain things you can't do, certain things you can't do. That's that's a, a person telling you, and sometimes, and we follow that, right? But if God says it's something, that's way above a, a person, regular person telling you, right? This is somebody who's you're expecting uh, sal salvation for, you're expecting grace from, mercy, everything. So, if that God is telling you don't do something, what what makes you think you could go against that, though? If my God told me not to do that, then my God, I wouldn't do it. Do you know that's in the Bible, though? God, the God of the Bible tells you not to get them? Well, that's your Christian God. Huh? That's your Christian God. A Christian God? Yeah. What other gods is there? God loves you. But aren't they all based off the same thing? Like a Catholic God? The the, the Muslims believe their foundation on this? No, I don't, I'm not, I don't believe in none of that. I just believe in the greater, the greater God. Okay, so your God, then. How, what does your God require and what does he not? Like, what, what does he let you do? What doesn't he let you do? Or can you do anything? Really? So is there, is there a balance with your God then? No. There is none? What's good to your God then? So how do you know you're pleasing him, King? I don't, I don't try. What's your God's name? Yeah. God. God. I don't believe we just popped up out of nowhere, right? I believe oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. what I said. That's all I know about him. That's all I will know. So that's all you care about. Just, exactly. You're here on earth and everything. I do whatever I believe. But okay, so whatever you believe though, but how do you base your 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 standard with it though, King? Okay? Myself off my upbringing, off my experience. <laughs> so it's objective. Mass objective. Okay. Okay. Well, well, dang. Okay. Okay. For example, yeah. Uh, let's say like your job, right? I know for for most people, it's it's a, a stability. It's a stable job. It's a good. It pays good and everything. Do you know the, obviously you would know the origins of where it came from, right? What was the origins of, of a police officer? It came, but, uh, it's just, uh, like origin, origin, like, in life, or origin? No, how did it start? Like, America, yeah, the history of it, like, in America. Like, cops, the, uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. Like, the first officers, the first police, what were they doing? You gotta remind me, bro. They were slave catchers. Right, they're slave catchers, and they're catching, they're catching our people. But was that good for our people, though? It's, but it's for them, though, right? Mm -hmm. So then, what if they're saying this is our God, and this is uh, what you believe now? We're giving you the uh, the basis of the fundamentals of what you think God should be, based off what we're doing, based off what, right? But then we're influenced by that, and now we're making decisions off of what we think is right from what they're pushing on us now. Right, so it's no—it's not really your beliefs; it's what they're making you believe. Yeah, right? Yeah, okay. So then, so then uh, now, your God—if you—I don't know if you have kids or anything. So if you were to have a kid, wh how are you going to teach him what God is if his beliefs are different than yours? What if what if his foundation though is opposite from yours though? Okay. You, if you have a child, you can you can you can teach them whatever you want, and that foundation right. can change based on whatever Off they life. learn, whatever whatever subjective okay. things come in their life. Okay. Okay. Right. So I, where, where I grew up, I didn't grow up in the city. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. wait, wait a second. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Right. So I, I just want to back off what he referenced about you having a child. 
Well, I'm just saying, like, hypothetically, you know what I mean? Because I don't have kids either, but either way, I'm just saying, you would want them to have similar ideals, right? Until they get older and have a mind of their own. Yeah. You would raise them properly because you, as your job, you would arrest criminals. I don't want them to make other people's lives or my life harder. Uh -huh. And I will try to mold them to that so where they can make their own decisions. Yeah, just have a foundation for you. You have the foundation as they grow older, have their own experiences, things like that, and then they, they, they build upon your foundation, right? Okay, so in that regard, what if they take on a guy that says, hey, it's okay to be a criminal now, sell exactly. drugs. Exactly, that was the You wouldn't arrest them? Would I arrest them? Yeah, if they were selling drugs. I don't arrest anybody selling drugs. I'm just saying, it feels true. That's my own child. Yeah, you would though, right? No. You wouldn't arrest your kid? I'm Wait not, a minute, I'm hold not on, what? I don't even know, if you were selling drugs, like I'm not even arrested. You know, hold on, you wouldn't arrest me either? No, what if I was doing that? Oh, my child, if somebody, you mean I'm watching them sell drugs? Or I yeah, you, you, drugs. either one. If I know he's selling, I can know anybody selling drugs. You gotta prove it, you gotta do all this. All I agree, but you know when you see it though. Man, you get arrested. Okay, so you arrest your child for selling drugs. But he's like, oh, well, wait a minute. My guy told me it was okay. So yeah, that's, for right. that's wild, right? Yeah. But you wouldn't care, right? You still arrest him. But why? Because it's part of my job. Part of the, the laws of America, right? Yeah. Great. So, in that regard, in reference to your take on, on God, you're saying is whatever you think and whatever you internalize, whatever the case may be, you don't think about anything else but the creation. But here, because God created everything, so that's where you ended up. So, if everybody had your stance, pretty much they can make it up as they go, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you have no problem with like anything in the Bible mm -hmm. as well, right? You read the Bible at all? You believe in the Bible? I read the Bible. But you don't base your don't understanding of God on the Bible. No. Why is that? What's that? I don't want to. You don't want to? You've yeah. been in church before? No. Okay. We're a Baptist. Baptist? That like turns you away from church or whatnot? No. I just try to take it for myself. Okay. That's not a problem. Like I said, church isn't necessarily the end all be all. Because we don't think church is beneficial at all, personally. Yeah. We do believe in the Bible still because that's where we get the understanding of God from. So that's the only thing I'm trying to reference. But if there's a... Uh, you said earlier that you said you, you don't believe in a balanced God, or your God isn't balanced. Is that what you said? Know. It could be. I, I don't could know be. anything about it. So, I mean, how would you understand more? Because all well, you say you... I don't, have a, I, don't, I don't have a want or urge to understand. Interesting. What happened? Oh, my bad. But anyways, here's the thing. Oh, my bad. No. If, if we're to... If somebody was to follow you and be like, I believe in God, and they start asking questions, like we're asking questions, and you just stop there, would you have a problem with somebody like saying, oh, I don't believe in that God? Yeah. No. No. I don't, I don't know. What if you're not the right God? What if you're not the wrong God? Or whatever. That's a great point. I don't know. That's a great point. Yeah. Unless I actually met my God or your God or something, there's no way I can disprove the fact that your God is a greater God or even a more real God than someone else. I can prove it. I? I can prove my God's no a lot more believable than your God with the with the Bible. Of course I could. No, no, I'm not trying to. No, no, no. You could believe that, but it's impossible for you to give me. Well, I don't believe that. I mean, I can, I can, I, I can give you information. It's up to you to believe it or not. That's why. That's why. That's I see what you're saying. So you, you you don't think there's any chance you can believe in the God of the Bible? Interesting. Have you heard of a word called prophecy before? Yes. What is prophecy? What's your name? I know it says R. What's your What's your Rose. name? Rose. Oh, it's Rose. Okay, last name. What's What's prophecy, Rhodes? Well, prophecy is just like a, almost like a foreshadow, right? Like, foreshadow, foretelling. foretelling. So you believe there's prophecy in the Bible? No. You don't? No. I, Are you familiar I don't, with? I don't, I don't. You say you've read it before, though, right? Yeah. Have you You never read a prophecy in the Bible? Okay, so they. Oh, you don't believe in the Bible? No, no, no. Okay, interesting. Not a problem. Like I said, I'm just gonna read you something, cause like I said, this Bible comes from documents. You know what I mean? Manuscripts. You familiar with that? From humans. Yeah, man. Of course. You were created by a guy, though, right? Humans. Humans are created by your God as well, right? Yeah. Hold on. What? No, we're talking about your God. Your God. Your your God created humans, right? Your God. Is your God a he? I don't, I don't know. All right. I've never met 
Not a problem. Yeah, perfect, perfectly uh, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just entertaining your, your logic, you know what I mean? So, your God created humans, right? Male and females. Great, great. Great, that's that's all we need, that's all we need. <laughs> I, 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 listen, that, give me that Deuteronomy 38, and, uh, 32 and 8 in the NLT. The Bible actually says that, you know that? That there's multiple gods? So you're not off, you're not too off too far off, you know what I mean? So they're not too far off from me. Well, you're coming after the the, the Bible is written. I don't, I don't know what they're saying. I'm gonna read it to you. Go ahead. So this is this is Deuteronomy thirty two and eight in the GMT. It says the most high assigned nations their lands. He determined where people should live. He assigned to each nation a heavenly being. God of the Bible assigned each nation a heavenly being. That's why when you go to India. A, a, a deity that they they service because the God of the Bible is only for the Israelites who are so-called Black Hispanic Native Americans in this land. So the God of the, he the heavenly realm, the, creator, the same God you're referencing, we can uh, we can uh, pinpoint that's the same God of the Bible, even though you don't really elaborate on your beliefs per se, which is not necessarily an issue. But I'm just going to prove a point from our perspective that you're you're referencing the same God, a Creator of heaven and earth. But read that again. The Most High assigned nations their lands. He determined where people should live. He assigned to each nation a heavenly being, but Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. But Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. The creator that you're referencing chose the Israelites. That's the difference. That's why I was about to say, when you go to India, they believe in Buddha or Krishna or... What's that? How is the same creator I'm Because we believe the person that... You believe that it's the same creator Of course it is. I believe God created the earth and human beings. But you can't even elaborate on your guys. So all I'm saying is, you, so you believe in the. Fact, so the simple fact that you can't elaborate on something doesn't make it any more true. Well, the, I believe the truth that you referenced, that God created heaven and earth and human beings, yeah. that's what we agree upon, right? Yeah, cool. well, that's so it's the same God. That's what I'm telling you. How is how isn't it the same God? I, just, I, I don't know. It could it's be not. the exact same. But you're disagreeing with me. Uh, I'm, I'm holding you to the same point. I don't know. I'm not but I'm telling you that we're agreeing on this one point. And that's why I agree we're talking about the same God. That's what I'm telling you. No, we are. We are. If you believe in the God that created the heaven and earth that human beings come from, that's the same God. The heaven is right here. The sky. I didn't say you believe in that. I didn't say you believe in that. Same God that created heaven and earth. Excuse me? You just said the same God who created heaven and earth. You just automatically assumed that. And you said, what's heaven? I said, the heaven's right there. No, but you said that I, you're saying that we believe in the same exact thing. Then you said we believe in the same God that created heaven and earth. I never said anything about heaven. Yeah. Great. So how are we talking about the same person? Well, well I'm representing that as heaven. He created the sky, the sun, moon, and stars. Did you guys create that? Okay, I'm calling it the heavens. He created... He, not, I'm just referencing a title. You're, you're, you're getting triggered by, by the word, per se. But it's, it's the same concept. Sun, moon, and stars, the sky, all that stuff is created by the same deity. That's all I'm saying, brother. Give me that Deuteronomy 28. Let me read you something. So are you telling me that you have a problem with men having a, uh, a hand in writing this? That's not what I asked you. Do you lie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On the job? All time. Oh, man, that's crazy. <laughs> Part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I like this guy. That's, that's, that's good. We, we, I, I just wanted to. Somebody to comply with me that's about to commit suicide, and I need to stop him and telling the truth would. Yeah. Help them commit suicide. Yeah, 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 I feel I'm what you're saying. Lie in order to save a life. Yeah. I okay. I mean, that's not a problem. You know, that's your job. You signed up for that. That's not a problem though, because I know y'all get mental health evaluations, things like that. So you gotta be cognizant of what's going on. So that's not a problem. But give me that. I want to read you a prophecy now. Cause I just, just want to bring up that point, and this is this is how you know the Bible's real. Because a prophecy, we can just, because like you said, men lie and women lie, but God don't lie. That's what it says. Give me that in the Bible, actually. <laughs> I'm approving to you, brother. That's all. Whether you take it or leave it, I'm just gonna. I'm, you're, you're, you're never gonna hear this in the Christian church. That's what I'm telling you. Whatever we're telling you, you're never gonna hear that in the church. You know why? Because they have, they have to go to school and learn from the slave master, the same slave master that you work for now. That, that's who's teaching the Bible right now. Go ahead. Matter of fact, give me this first. Now, this is Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Uh -huh. Neither the son of man that he should repent. 
Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Yeah, God spoke the prophecies to the men of Israel. They wrote down the prophecies, and it's coming to pass thousands of years later. We're going to prove it. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Are you familiar with what happened to Israelites in Egypt in the Bible? With Moses, things like that? Moses, Moses, right? Ten Commandments, Moses. You seen that movie? You seen the movie, right? Well, with Moses, with, with Moses, the Israelites were in slavery to the Egyptians. And it, Pharaoh goes, that's a famous quote, let my people go. You heard that before, right? Let my people go. So in the midst of that, they go, they, he lets them go. And there's actually proof of this. I, I, I did a review on that uh, documentary where they found chariots in the Red Sea, things like that. But that's, that's beside the point. I'm saying that to say the hist historical references of the Bible and the prophecies of the Bible prove that there's a living God. And we're the people of the Bible. What's that? Well, I haven't showed it to you yet, but like I said, if you look up, let's look up, um, what's the guy's name? I did a video on it like a month ago. Basically, like I said, they, they did the archaeological digs and found the chariots uh, in, in, the, in the Red Sea. They found burnt sand where the, where the fire burnt the sand right where they was crossing that. They found Noah's Ark. They found all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? But the point of this is like referencing like who we are in the Bible. The Israelites were supposed to be going on slavery on ships. And that's why I was referencing Egypt. The Israelites were on slavery in, in Egypt. So guess what? They can't go on a ship from Egypt to Israel because it's right across the landmass. It's a walk. So this is the future prophecy. Keep reading. So read, it, read it from the top again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Give me uh, Exodus 20. Go ahead. It says, Exodus 20 and 2, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage, right, Rhodes? Not a problem. Egypt is synonymous with, with bondage according to the Bible. We just read that, right? So let's translate bondage for Egypt in this context. Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again with ships. Who that happened to? You don't know? Go ahead. By the way, wherefore I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. What, what does that sound like? It's in the Bible, though. Have you heard that before? No, have you read that before in the Bible? Have you heard that in the church? Of course of course you have. They don't read this part. They don't read this in the church. But this is a prophecy about the Israelites going into slavery on ships. But this is written 3,000 years ago. But when did it happen? 1600s, right? But this is a prophecy. That's what I'm telling you. Who went on ships in slavery? Right. Besides black and Hispanics. Before blacks and Hispanics. Yeah, who, who went? What? Where's the, uh, do you know? No, I don't know. Nobody. Do you know nobody or are you saying? No, read, read the last part again. No, let's, no, no, not based off of whatever. No, let's read the details of what we just read. And then I want to ask you again. Because you said it was us, right? That's what you said first. So we are, yeah. We, we definitely got to Great. But let's read the details, though. Read that again, the last part. And there... You shall be sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for bond men and bond women. They were sold to your enemies. Yeah. Who else was sold on off slave ships, though, in history? Say off slave ships. <laughs> exactly. So you said so it was the us. Fact, the fact that I don't know does, does not prove your point. I want you well, to I'm know. telling you it didn't happen I to anybody else. So I hear what you said. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's the truth either. I, I just heard what you said the same way I heard what that book said. It does not prove that it's true. Based off of my limited Why did you say it was us then, though? When I when you read it, when I when you heard it, what you said it was us, right? You said who, you said who was? You yeah. Said we were. Exactly yeah, but it's in the Bible. I'm not saying that that is referencing us. I'm of course it is. I'm you of course it is. If you knew the history, you would know. Yeah, but I don't. Have to, so I can't disprove what you're saying, and I'm also not agreeing. Okay. So you just neutral again. <laughs> okay, but yeah, you so, you, so you, I you, you my own knowledge. not a problem. You got to fly, right? Yeah, we can it's not a problem, brother. All we're doing is, is planting the seeds, brother. It's not, it's not going to happen in, in one city. <laughs> it's all good, brother. It's all good. I appreciate you, your patience and your time, brother. You know what I mean? Is that it? Read uh, yeah. the last part. Um, and no man shall buy you. Give me Isaiah 42. Have you ever had any questions about the Bible that you want answered? You just don't believe at all? You just... What, what do you believe in, actually? 
like when you daily you daily walk what do you what do you do That's besides being an officer like what are you interested in your family no no problem y'all get paid well here okay so i heard the budget out here is not too bu- not too good but i don't know since you're here what's that you short staff yeah i know i got chp out here picking up some pieces and things like that but chp has been out here though recently yeah, I heard they're doing like just traffic tickets type thing here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give me this. 42 and 22. Is it? Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. Now, I, I, I'm not going to go into detail. I just want you to recognize who it's talking about because it's talking about the same people. Because Isaiah is an Israelite. Read. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Uh huh. They are all of them snared in holes. Read on. And they are hid in prison houses. Who's hid in prison houses the most in America? In America. In America. Yeah. Who else? Blacks and Hispanics. Who right? Who are the Israelites? This, this is it. Yeah. This, this sign right here. It should be. Yeah. This sign right here. You know what I mean? Where are you from, actually? Are you, would you consider yourself African American or Haitian or Jamaican or? According to my 23 and me, more Nigerian. Nigerian? Yeah, I mean that's where the slaves came from, right? West Africa. Okay, but you're not Jamaican or Haitian. You're just African American. Okay, yeah, good. And actually, damn, did I bring my? I got a map too. It's cold. It's a map in like the 14, 1500s where it actually has, you know, the stenographers showing where the Jews were at in West Africa. Isn't that ironic? Isn't, isn't that kind of crazy? And now the Bible's saying the same thing. But men just wrote it, right? It's just, oh, yeah, it's just men. Just, just regular regular guys. You know, just regular guys, you know. Just so happen to have prophecy of God, you know, write down on documents. Listen, brother. It, it, like, listen, the God that you're representing is the God of the Bible. I, I, like I said, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm reiterating it because we, I'm, I'm instilling information in you so you can go research. There's plenty of information. Archaeology, history, it all matches up with the Bible because the Bible is real. And this is your book. You'll learn it, but like I said, even, 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 if, even if you don't learn it, like I said, you'll find out later, whether through me or somebody else. But hopefully, like I said, you do the research, like you said, and then uh, if you have any questions, we're out here every Saturday, you know what I mean? So next week, you can catch questions or whenever you get a chance. What's that? Yeah, definitely appreciate it. You had, you, had, you had any questions or anything like that? No, no, I was just listening. I'm about to go back over there, but I just, uh, you know, you just, you just monitoring the, uh, the area? No, I just wanted to get information. No, I'm talking about over there. Oh, uh, I'm working with the uh, Department of Public Welfare. Okay. That's not a problem. Like I said, brother, appreciate your time. But uh, give me um, uh, Revelation. What, what do you want to hear? He got, he, no, he got an interpret translation. Uh, what is that? NLT. Yeah, yeah, give me that. Let's see what it says in different translations. Read on. This is Isaiah, this is Isaiah 42 and 22 in the NLT. But the uh, own people have been Isaiah robbed 10, and plundered, 22. enslaved, imprisoned, and trapped. They are fair game for anyone and have no one to protect them, no one to take them back home. Yeah, where's black people's homes? It sure can be America, right? If we came here as slaves. Yeah. Where's that at? We're right in Africa. All over. But you say you're from Nigeria, right? Or, or at least your ancestry. Your ancestry. Okay. But we, like I said, do, we, do you have a, uh, the African flyer? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you first generation here or you family been here? Okay. I don't know how long. 10 and 8. Well, yeah. We don't, we don't have the same record. Of course, exactly, because <laughs> more than likely it goes back to uh, 1800s, 1700s, so you can't you can't get past that time frame. You, you don't know the tribe of Nigeria? That's what I'm saying. You don't know the tribe. That's, that's why I asked me his first, second generation, but that's what I was saying. We have a, a Israelites in Africa and Asia, so if you're from Nigeria, you're either Yoruba, Igbo, um... What's that? One of my homies first generation. Nigeria or where? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More than likely, if you're from Nigeria, the Israelites in Nigeria are either Igbo or Yoruba. But that's besides the point. So, Psalms 10. 
Chill out. Yeah, I, I got a couple more for you. Appreciate it. Let me read you something else. So, how long have you been a police officer? Oh, wow. Damn, veteran. Okay. Do you, uh, what, what was your uh, motivation in becoming a police officer? Helping people? What's that? Provided an intrinsic reward. Reward? Okay. What about the, the the police department as a whole? Like, you think they help the community, things like that? Or they, overall? Yeah, overall. In what way? Give me the top two ways you think police help the community. Crime prevention. In reference to what? Okay. Yeah, e EMTs. I mean, y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all are training that. Um, but you, you're mostly crime stopping or responding to criminals, things like that. Yeah, law enforcement. Exactly. Okay. So we started off the conversation, and he referenced the origin of policing, right? We heard about that, right? It came from slave catching. Now it morphed into a more professional, you know, uh, standpoint in preventing crime. But ultimately, we know for a fact, or you should know, that they police our communities more than anybody else. Why is that? But where did the crime originate from? Because when, because because criminals weren't, they, criminals weren't just born for the most part. No, no, no. I'm not talking about lawmaking. I'm talking about people's actions and they, how, what triggered that, those actions. Oh, the necessity to survive. Yeah. Oh, wow. Great. So who created a climate like that? We didn't create it for ourselves, did we? <laughs> White people did it, right? Hey, bring that up by the Kerner Commission. The Kerner Commission. Remember I brought that up last time? Kerner, K-E-R-N-E-R. -E get on that side. Watch out, watch out. Let me read you something real quick. It might, it's cold. You familiar with Dr. Umar? Uh, Umar yeah, Umar Johnson. I'm going to read you what he, what he referenced when he was on the Joe, Joe Budden podcast. And he, he referenced something that was going on in the 60s around the civil rights movement, there was a lot of uprisings in, in black communities all across the nation. And the president, I believe he said it's Lyndon B. Johnson, did a, did a study. And he had a study like, man, why are these black people wilding out in the country in the 60s? But obviously, yeah, but he know, like, we know why, uh, we, us personally, but at the government level, like, man, why are these black people going so crazy and rioting in the 60s when they just got emancipated, per se, and also got civil rights passed? You know what I want? Go ahead. It's a Wikipedia Kerner Commission, the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, known as the Kerner, Co the Kerner Commission after its chair, Governor uh, uh, Otto Kerner Ju uh, Jr. of Illinois, was an 11-member presidential commission established in July 1967 by President Lyndon B. Johnson in an executive order 11365 to investigate the causes over 150 riots throughout mm -hmm. the country in 1967 uh -huh. to provide recommendations that will prevent them from reoccurring. Right? Go ahead. The report released in 1968 after seven months of investigation rather uh, rather than attributing the riots to a small group of outsiders or troublemakers as many as, uh, as many prior riot investigations has done or to radicals or a foreign conspiracy, as as most three fourths of white America believe, the commission concluded that the rioting was a response. Was a what? A response. Read. To decades of pervasive discrimination and segregation. Read. So said the commission, white racism. Wait a minute. Read this again. White racism is essentially responsible for the explosive mixture, which has been accumulating in our cities since the end of World War II. What white American, white Americans have never fully understood, but what the black can never forget is what is is that white society is deeply implicated in the ghetto. White institutions credit it. Mm -hmm. White institutions maintain it. Read. White society condones they it. They condone it. Read. The commission's 426-page report is regarded as the touchstones of race relations and as one of the two sem seminal works on race this uh, on race in this country. It was also a bestseller 
outselling even the Warren report, which the president, uh, uh, John, 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 F. Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy's assassination. Long story short, the president of the United States in the 60s concluded, man, these black people are going crazy because white racism, white, white uh, uh, prejudice, things like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The system still, st the system still stands. Absolutely, and the people that had children around that time that were hanging people, they're still alive now. Now we're not saying all white people perform those acts or think that way, but in all actuality, they're not changing anything. They're lawmakers. Yeah, and most of them are probably lawmakers now. Really, you know what I'm saying? Maybe. All those children grew up to be in the Senate grew up to be in the legislative, legislative branches. And I've also read another report really saying that, okay, now say young kids, like wh white kids, then they don't show the racism. But apathy, apathy, which is the opposite of empathy, leads to what? It's white silence. You know what I'm saying? Do, uh, why everything is still happening to the black, Hispanic, and Native American communities. Is it do they, uh, you ever heard of Tim Wise? Yeah, the white guy, yeah. He's an apologist for white people, or black people, per se. I mean, he's not changing anything, though. It's, 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 great, it's, great for, it's great for white persons to acknowledge that, but he's not pushing any documents. He's not pushing any change. That's fine. Great. Thanks for shining light on what we already know. You're not living it, though. You're in a suit and tie getting paid to speak. Like, what are you doing? Nothing. That's, that's the point. So the apathy he's referencing is more on a more like a common level, but at the higher levels in Senate, Congress, and even in police force. That's why I represent what, what made you become a policeman. You want you want to make change in the community, which is positive, and also you want to stop crime because obviously that's I mean it's part of the system that we're in. We didn't create the communities that we lived in because why? First of all, we were, we were slaves here, so of course they made changes with our community and they pushed us away. Then we built our own communities, and guess what happened? You're familiar, brother. Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had our own stuff. Then what happened? They bombed us. Why? I thought you guys didn't like us. I thought you guys wanted us over there. But no, you wanted us in your community so we can basically put our money in your... In your it's all about money. And that's what feminism was about as well. So just imagine you growing up in, in, in a, in a uh, white society, looking over your shoulder, fearing for your life, which most people don't do right now. But if you live in the South, Mississippi, Arkansas, Georgia, they, they hung somebody like last week in Georgia. It's like a vacation type thing? No, for the job. Oh, really? Yeah, they take a bunch of officers down here to learn the history of slavery. Oh, really? That's that's interesting. What was it What was it like the end result of that? Like, what was that? Just recognize what's going on? or? like a wake up call because you know a lot of people like, oh, all racism is over. That was so long ago. Yeah. That's true. And it's still getting passed on to people. So basically, our chief was like, hey, yeah, I mean, we want to take these people down there uh -huh. to get that experience to learn, like, like how recent it is, how much it's still affecting the community. Yeah. That way, it will change the outlook of the type of police work we do. Like, you know, like. But not towards you, like white officers, though. That's pre I'm pretty sure it's for less to the white officers. Because you're not it racist, so you're on paper. However, where I grew up, I've been from Philly. And, 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 oh, you are from Philly. Okay, yeah. Of course. So it was good for me too. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm still in a, in a sense thinking like, oh, it's still so long ago. How old are you, brother? Okay, you, you're a little younger than me, yeah, but yeah. So because they don't teach you the, the real. Yeah, they don't exactly. They're going to teach you, teach you the surface level. Now. Like, oh, we did something bad. Yeah. Like, not that we took pictures hanging people like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, like, it's right, it's right, where's it at? Where's the picture at? Oh, right here. Right. This they, picture. They don't, they don't teach you that we're laughing at the bodies. Yeah, laughing barrels and yeah. getting to stick your head in the barrel to laugh. Like, go around back to get a, a piece of chicken. They're like, what? You, you know what I mean? Like, so they don't teach you that aspect of it. So even for you know, us minorities, that way, yeah. it was still a wake-up call. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So, so I was cool, so I went down there. Okay. That's interesting. That the police was sponsored something like that. That's interesting. That's the first time I heard that. That's powerful, though. I ain't gonna lie. That's powerful. I don't think it's gonna change anything, but what's that? Was it Philly Department or Oakland Department? Well, no, he, he, you was out here and you went to Philly, or went to uh, the South. Yeah, so he sponsored the trip in a couple of days. Where see, it was a sponsored trip. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. That's not a problem. But like I said, like there's still, like, would you say there's racist cops in the department here? What about the policemen though? That's what I'm asking. Every, every, every single place incorporates every single. Absolutely. Place.
why, but why why do you think that still is though? Is that just innate or is that just learn behavior? Well, I agree with that. Give me a uh, uh, was it Psalms fifty eight three? Let's see what the Bible says. Let me go back to the Bible real quick and give you a little insight. Cause like I said I know you got to get back, but we're just having a, a it's a powerful build though. Give me that. Yeah, not a problem, brother. I want to see. Actually, give me uh, Psalms ten. That's what I want. I'm gonna give you this one. I, give, I got one more. This has a question on your uh, daily duties as an officer. Read. Well, this is Psalms fifty-eight and three. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Read on. They go astray as soon as they be born. Uh -huh. Speaking lies. Yeah, the wicked are estranged from the womb, so they're wicked from from birth. Of course. Now, I'm not saying it's just one particular group of people, but obviously in this society, we know the people in charge are wicked as hell. A wicked person would put drugs and guns in your community so you can kill each other. That's what happens. And now we're defending, and now you're defending against the, the system that created it. It's, 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 it's madness. So you're, you're never going to get ahead because why? They just dumped guns in Chicago not too long ago, too. They do it all the time. LA, Chicago, every black community that you see on, on in America has been sponsored by CIA. Uh, uh, infiltration and quiet is kept the gang leaders were Freemasons and CIA members as well why because they, they need the the, uh, the push of, of negativity per se that's why the activists get arrested that's why they kill the leaders like Martin Luther King uh, uh, Marcus Garvey got deported back to Jamaica in the 20s when he had the biggest movement on, in America at the time you familiar with Marcus Garvey? In 1920 so you look at Marcus Garvey he had the biggest movement in American history and he was too powerful he was bringing everybody, every black person together from Africa, things like that. And he bought like two cruise ships. Look at look this up. He brought two cruise ships and he packed black people on the boats. He was sailing back to Africa. Coast Guard stopped in the middle of the ocean, so him turn the boat around. That's what Liberia came That's what happened. And, and that's how Liberia came about the country. Yeah. So it's just, it's just like if they wanted peace and prosperity for other people, they would allow that. What If you want to leave the, the, the toxic America, if you want to leave toxic America, we have to have paperwork for the most part. We have to have understanding of, okay, we got to have enough money to go over there and thrive and build yourself up over there. But ultimately, we're, we're comfortable now. It's kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. I'm familiar with that, I'm sure. But the point is, when, you, when you're when you an officer now, you see things that we don't see for, for, on the inside level. But from us growing up here, it's like we know for a fact they're not here to help the community. Like, there's some good cops, I'm sure. They help save lives, seven foot of bullet, somebody... You know, that's their job, but ultimately, there's people here that suffer from the uh, uh, the inception of slavery and um, the community just being detrimental to their own society, and also, they have no other choice, per se, because they don't see any other choice. If I go to apply for a job between me and a white man, <laughs> more likely the white man's going to get the job, depending on what it is, depending on the skill set, the level. If I'm at Walmart, of course I'm going to get the job. They don't care. I, I, I didn't take brain cells. I'm talking about prestigious, prestigious jobs, things like that. But uh, give me Psalms 10 and 8. That's what I want. And I'm going to leave you with this. Go ahead. Psalms 10 and 8. Let me see. Right. Start at... Uh, start at 2. Okay, uh, and I'm going to read down. I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, Psalms, 10. 10 and, Psalms 10 and 2. The wicked in his pride the persecute the poor. The wicked in his pride persecute the poor. Who's the most rich people on earth right now? Who? What people? I don't know. In America. Oh, in America. We know who the elites are. The elites are white people, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's just Rothschilds, Rockefellers, yeah. DuPonts, uh, uh, what's the other last names? It's like eight or nine last names. Morgan. But most of them are European. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even in America. We know the rich people are in America are Europeans. Even though there's some black rich people, but they're not helping anybody either. But go ahead. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined uh -huh. for the wicked boasted. Of his, of his heart's desire. Read on. Bless the covet, covetous. Read on. Whom the Lord. You know what covetous is? Like, like how, um, let's, on our level, I see a guy in a Mercedes. Man, I want that Mercedes. I'm coveting what he has. I want it. So, like, if I was a criminal, man, I'm going to try to take his car from him. That's coveting something. And that's a sin in the Bible. So, of course, it's talking about the wicked person doing that. So, guess what? The white man went to Africa and what colonized it, right? Gold, resources, oil, diamonds. But Africans don't control that in their own country. 
That's what covetousness is. That's what leads to, to, to wickedness. Go ahead. Whom the Lord abhorred. Who the Lord abhors. Abhorred is a type of hate, a disdain. God disdains that type of action. Read. The wicked, through, through the pride of his countenance, Read on. would not seek after God. He won't seek after God. Most white people are atheists in America. Obviously, there's two billion Christians, but in America, most people that come to us and talk that are Caucasian, even white people, like yourself, not really atheists, you're, you're more like an agnostic. Yeah, you're agnostic, so yeah. But white people, they, they don't believe in God. They're atheists. Go ahead. God is not in all his thoughts. Read on. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. Read on. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Isn't that America? Doesn't America puff at his enemies? They got the most powerful military. They can go anywhere in the world, per se, and take over, sponsor a coup, get their resources anywhere outside of Russia, North Korea, things like that. And maybe Iran. Those are only three countries they haven't really conquered because they know they got to... Uh, 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 somebody fight against them. You know what I mean? So that's what it's talking about. America's been everywhere and conquered the known world. Go ahead. He had said in his heart, I shall not be moved Read on. or I shall never be in, in, in adversity. I'm never going to be in adversity. America's never been in adversity, right or wrong. When is... This is talking about the white man. Go ahead. And quiet is kept. This is a real brief point. I was watching a dialogue between... Um, who was it? I want to say it was Quanell. You know, Brother Quanell, he, he's he's a good, powerful brother. Basically, it was a white man and a uh, Quanell talking on a, a, a TV show, and the white man goes, "Man, our military can defeat anybody. We'll never be defeated." In my mind, I'm like, "That's pride," but of course, that's all he knows because America can go anywhere, like I said before, and that's what he's talking about—the pride. Read. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Uh huh. His, under his tongue is mischief. And vanity. And vanity. Read on. He sitteth in the lurking place. This is this is the point I wanted to make because this is this correlating to kind of like the, the police officer work. They do what? He sitteth in the lurking places. He sitteth in the lurking places. Read. Of the villages. Read on. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. Uh huh. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Didn't that sound like a police officer? It does it. Not to me. The cops sit in lurking places, right? And they murder innocent people. I'm not saying it's just police officers, but that's what I would correlate it with. Why not? Do, 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 have, have you seen videos of cop killing innocent people? Mostly who? African Americans. Why is that? That don't sound like you're saying. Well, it doesn't have to be what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just saying that aspect is tied into this verse. I'm not saying that's a. I'm not saying that. What's that? I just wanted to know you know I was agreeing with. I had to. Yeah. I'm just saying the, the aspect I'm referencing is what's described here. I'm not saying it's the only people that do it. You know what I mean? Because we know there's criminals in all shapes and sizes and colors. You know what I mean? But who, who, but who persecutes the poor? That's why I was referencing earlier. Most of the crime is in poor communities. Right? And that's where we live. So who's persecuting the poor in the communities? Who's persecuting the poor? Harassing, uh, chastising, like targeting. We know who does that, brother. Come on, Rhodes. Rhodes. I don't know if I can. Because poor people can't persecute the poor people. We can. No, they I, can. They can abuse them. I hear you. you know what I mean? I hear you. Persecution. Is, go ahead. Go ahead. You're trying to say is police officers specifically, what you're saying right mm -hmm. now, are intentionally going to minority neighborhoods. Black well, that's what they service so mostly. And, and, that's where no, crime is. We re no, we no, referenced that earlier. Service in terms of higher prices. Of course. Of higher, like, would, would it make sense? Like, if I if all my money is going to be made over here, am I going to put my money over here? Exactly. Like, no, I'm going to put my money over uh, here. Absolutely. Okay, so if all the crime is happening over here, am I going to put more? Emphasis, so, so yeah. In terms of the idea of persecution based off of realism or or, or, or how, I mean, just how you're supposed to do it, you know, I, I don't know why the words are coming to the That's That's what's normal, though, right? But the I, crimes over here, we're going to put more presence so, over so here. I don't know about the idea of persecution in terms, but this in terms is, of this, need this, and relevance. I, I, but that's what I re referenced earlier. We didn't create our communities no, that no, way. No, that's it. And that's, that's, why, that's, why, also, that's my point. That it is like that. I'm not saying it's not like that. I'm telling you 
that the reason it's like that is because, first of all, we were out here in slave ships, and they created the communities for us and, and made it hard for us to get jobs, so we had to turn to drugs. We had to turn to gangbanging. Great, great. And this is all referenced in the Bible, brother. That's all we're saying, and it's reality. You know what I mean? Because it says it's the word of God, and it says uh, the word of life. Because it's a living God, a living Bible. And it, it's, it's true every day. Because, like I said, that, well, those three first verses that I read all correlate to our people right now. So the only, the only reason why I brought that up to do to your job, because we know for a fact when we came over here, the police officers were slave catchers. Fast forward 400 years later, doing the same thing. We're doing the same thing. Like, obviously, we know people have choices in life. And people that have a criminal background more likely are more likely to commit more crime. But that's what you're saying you're in here to do. But my, my personal belief, the only way it's going to change is if you change people's mindsets. Locking them up isn't rehabilitation. We know that for a fact. There's a lot of crime going on in jail right now. Selling drugs in jail. Stabbing and murders in jail. Gang banging in jail. We know that for a fact. You're not rehabilitating people in jail. You have to rehabilitate people mentally. You have to, basically you have to go, send them to a therapist, honestly. People, our people, like, we, what was the article you brought up about um, trauma being passed down through DNA? You heard about that? You seen that study? I think, I think it was either North Carolina or one of the universities did a study on if, if, trauma, if trauma gets passed down through DNA. So just imagine our ancestors coming on slave ships, the first 20 years, get beat to death, hung, tarred and feathered, and all that type of stuff, and then they have kids raised them in the same trauma. 20 years later, they free the slaves, quote unquote, and the DNA still breeds that type of a, a you know, a finicky uh, thought process and spirit. Why? Because we're in the same condition, but it's just a little bit different. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the only place where I am is the idea how how we come to change. Is, I don't know. I don't got an answer. So, but I know what? some of it is probably we got some people, man. I, I do think they need to be incarcerated. I'm not, I'm not saying they don't need to. Some people have that. That's a judgment, per se. They, they, that's a judgment they deserve. Yeah, I, I just don't. I just don't know at what point, like you, like let's say you, the idea, like you offer them therapy and you do this, uh -huh. to where they like, oh, this, this is the punishment that I received for doing. Well, I'm not saying it's a punishment. I'm saying once they come out, in their head, uh, yeah. I think, like, I'm oh, saying all I had to do was go to therapy. No, I'm saying it, once they serve a term and they come out of prison, oh, okay. so now get their mind right. Most of, most of the time, it's as simple as getting a job. You know what I mean? Because if, if they don't have an income, what else you gonna do? You can't get a job. I mean, some some people hire inmates. Exactly. Some people become truckers. Things. That's good income. A trucker, things like that. But most people don't. Exactly. I'm gonna say that's just one thing I'm familiar with. That hire uh, quote unquote crim uh, felons. Yeah. Exactly. Especially in the city, it's expensive out here. I'm just saying that's just an opportunity, you know what I mean? Because most people, when they go in there, they're like, man, I got to fit for myself in here. Then they come out, it's like, damn, I, I, I miss, I, I'm behind by five, six years, however long I did. And then I don't have, a, like, I might not have a family. I got to pick up myself on my bootstraps. But I'm just saying that to say, there's no opportunity for rehabilitation, really, in those jail cells. So just imagine, like, let's just say, we're talking to you right now, right? I'm telling you that you're an Israelite. You might not believe it. But just imagine, like I said, if you had more understanding of what we're talking about, you come back a month from now, two months from now, no matter how long it takes, it's like, man, I saw what you were saying, I heard what you were saying, I did some research, I want to learn more. That's all it takes. But I'm saying, from your perspective, you're already on the up and up. You have a good job, you're not a criminal. I'm saying from people that are living a, a lowly life, that don't have a, a inspiration, they do better, that's what we're trying to do. So me, me personally, I can see how that, that can help, right? And in terms of yeah. That we don't have, right? Exactly. So, black, well, maybe, well, like, yeah. Yeah, we're familiar with the term black, but we know black is a nationality. Yeah. But I know what you mean. So, Give me Ezekiel 37. So, no, I, mean, I, I don't disagree that like, having that type of that familiar bond or that community uh -huh. is something, something that can take somebody out of somewhere, put them in food, yeah. to actually promote you know, black wellness, mm -hmm. you know, black wealth, yeah. and, and helping them be a different path. Than, yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. That's all good. Like I said, it's all about your mindset. You know what I mean? Because you don't—you're not gonna do something if you don't think it first, right? And that's what it says. As a man thinks, so is he. If you think you're a criminal, you think you can get away with crime. Of course, you're gonna do it until 
you know, the rose runs into you <laughs> by chance. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, right. that's how people think. I've got, got away with it for 10 years so far, right. and then one time off, they get pulled over, catch them with work, you're out of here. And then, like, damn, like, what the hell? All my money, all my resources, all my freedom is gone. But I'm saying, though, before that it gets to that point, even, even after they come out of jail, like I said, there has to be some type of uh, upliftment, you know what I mean? But they're not going to get it just by walking and being around the same people, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's all we're saying, brother, because before we were doing this, we was in the streets. Everybody up here. This is his neighborhood. He grew up over here, 60th Mission, doing all type of nonsense. I was up in Sac. I'm from Sac. But guess what? Now I'm doing this. Why? Because this, I had a spiritual awakening eventually. And I thought about it, man, because I already believe in the Bible, but I wasn't really, I'm not doing anything about it. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, what's going on? So I stumbled upon some information, did my research. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is going on. But guess what? We, we know our ancestors come from West Africa. Some come from the Caribbean, things like that, but we all come from West Africa. But what about before West Africa? We're proving it with the Bible and history that we came from Israel. That's outside of that. But we can, we have no problem saying we're from West Africa, but at the same time, that's not our origin. That's not our true nationality. You know what I mean? Because it's 50 countries in Africa. We can be from any country in Africa, but also in actuality, we know for a fact we weren't calling ourselves African back then either. But this is the last one I want to give you. Uh, no, no, I want to... Uh, at the top for flesh on your bones. Um, yeah, let me read this last one. I, I'll let you go after this. Go ahead. This is Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Read on. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. They were very dry. These bones are very dry. Read on. And he said unto me, Son of man, uh, can these bones live? Seen. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, uh -huh. O ye dry bones. O ye dry bones. It's, a, it's, a, it's allegory and it's a metaphor for people. These bones are dry. Why? They don't have the information. They don't have an understanding of who they are. But it's going to elaborate. Read. Hear the word of the Lord. Read on. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones. Uh -huh. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. I'm a, I'm a, like he said, do uh, CPR on somebody. You put breath in them, give them life, right? That's how the word is supposed to act in this point. The people that are trying to rebuild themselves. That's what we're trying to say. Go ahead. And ye shall live. And ye shall live. Read on. And I will lay sinews upon you uh -huh. and will bring up flesh upon you. You'll put flesh on the bones. Read on. And cover you with skin. Read. And put breath in you. And ye shall live, uh -huh. and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Keep reading. So I prophesied as Keep, I was uh, commanded. Wisdom Psalm 7, first. And yeah. as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Uh -huh. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Uh -huh. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind. Read. Thus said the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, uh -huh. and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Read on. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. See what, let's see what the breath is real quick. Give me that. Wisdom of Solomon 7 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Wisdom is more moving than any motion. Read on. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. Uh -huh. For she is the breath of the power of God. Wisdom is the breath of the power of God. That's the breath that's getting into these bones. That's a, that's a parallel. They're breathing wisdom into these people. That's, a, that's the point. Read on. In a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty, therefore no one, uh, therefore no defiled thing fall into her. Yeah, so the wisdom that is being put on these bones is, is the breath. Or excuse me, the breath is the wisdom. So just imagine, like I said, people coming into us like, man, I'm just an African American. I'm, I'm a nigga in America. All I know is drugs and guns in, in the hood. But guess what? Instead of you thinking you're a, a, a black man, you're an Israelite. You're a guy chosen people. Guess what? Now you have a stand. Now you have a, a something to look forward to. That's how that's how most of us came into this thing. Like we're not just niggas and spicks. Like oh damn, like we don't have to do that no more. Because obviously you have to have a conscience first and foremost. And like I said, nobody just wants to just sell out and just crash out, like they say in the streets. We're not trying to crash out and just die and go to jail. Like that's crazy. You grow older, you get mature, you like start seeing things different. Like man, like. I got to do something different. But in this case, it's a spiritual spiritual thing. You know what I mean? 
than the wisdom of the Bible. That's where we're starting to uh, get to our people. And like I said, you're not going to learn this in the church. They're telling you, oh, all you got to do is believe in Jesus and repent and sing songs. and That's it. What, what, what else? What, get, exactly, get their money. Like, what else are they saying in the church besides that? Everybody can be saved and come. But guess what? In a Christian church, you know they get tax-free money in there, right? So what else do you need? All you need is bodies. Of course you're going to tell them whatever they want to hear. You know what I mean? You can be with that at least. And that's why we don't tell people to go to church. Like, there's nothing there. They're not going to tell you what we're telling you. Especially as an Israelite. Everybody else can do what they want to do. Our people, Black and Native Americans, they need to learn the truth of the Bible, the history of the Bible, the archaeology. We can prove everything we're talking about up here. Go ahead. It says, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet. And then, and we'll read that again. Con, and the breath came into them. The breath came into them. The wisdom came into them. Read. And they lived. And they lived. And stood up upon their feet. Uh huh. An exceeding great army. They stood upon an exceeding great army, the army of God, battling against the false doctrines of the world, the nonsense that we've been taught. Like you said in school, we don't learn nothing. I learned more in this truth in in one year than any, any my third. In anything, school, college, I learned more than one year learning this, 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 the Bible and everything else than anywhere else. You know what I mean? That's what we're trying to say. Because a lot of people have a problem with the Bible. A lot of people have a problem with, with church because of the church they went to. We talked to a sister that said, the, the pastor molested somebody in the church. I'm like, they're supposed to be a holy man. Like, what's going on? But guess what? They're, they're more valid than anybody else. Because they can deceive you just by a smile. Because they, they, they got the power over the people. You know what I mean? So that's that's a that's a power that, that God doesn't like because they're abusing it. You know what I mean? You're taking advantage of people that see you as some type of figure, but in all actuality, you're just here for money and, and sex. Like that's crazy. And and that's why we don't approve anybody going to those churches. Like I said. Don't get me wrong, bro. Whatever I say to you today, just because I don't believe in the Bible, doesn't yeah. mean I don't understand or believe in the the power that it has, mm -hmm. the positivity that it can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's mostly other nations and people that are brainwashed. But yeah, well, it's not a problem, though. We're not, we're not, we're not emotional up here about that. Because it's not for everybody, ultimately. Yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. Like, that's all it is, brother. Yeah, like I said, it's, like, it's, 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 one sitting isn't going to give you the information you need to just turn a corner on something. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Certain things yeah, exactly. That's all it is. Like I said, it's, it's about planting a seed and somebody else watering. That's all. That's the Bible as well. Yeah. But all, all we're here to do is just get the information, take it or leave it. We don't know if he's going to see you again, even though you work out here. Like I said, I believe it. Like I said, you probably seen this before, but I'm just saying that to say. Yeah, it's all good. Like I said, like. All we're out here to do is shed light on what's going on. Like I said, there's other things that we can definitely touch on, but like I said, I just want to touch on your perspective. Obviously, like I said, whether you agree or not, all we're here to do is just drop knowledge on you, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate definitely. Your time too, bro. Yeah, you already know, Rose. Be safe, man. Yes, sir. All praise to the most high. Yeah, man. We, next time we see you, man, I want you to uh, say you were from Tribe of Judah or something. Yeah, it's all it's all good, brother. Recognize the guy you believe in is the God of the Bible, man. Oh yeah, no more tattoos either. We we forgot to touch on that, but it's all good. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that, brother. Let's read that real quick before you, before you get out of earshot. Give me that in Leviticus. Ain't no reason to get no tattoo, man. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Give me that. Leviticus 19, 27? Or 1928? Amplified Bible? Yeah, give me that real quick. Yeah, the brother was getting it. Maybe. I don't know if I can do that, but... They gotta do with anything. What do you think you're gonna get fired or something? They ain't gonna watch our shit. Go ahead. Leviticus 19 and 27? 20, 28. You should not make any cuts on your body in mourning for the dead, 
nor make any tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. That's the law of, of God. This is the Amplified Bible. Yeah, the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible. The Amplified Translation. And, and that's what we correlated with. People say, it doesn't say tattoos there. But of course, give me that in the Hebrew, actually. Let me see what it says in the Hebrew. Just to be certain. But either way, making cuttings on your flesh, you're cutting your flesh when you put a, a, a tattoo needle to your, your skin. Because that's how it makes the mark and cuts into your flesh to leave the ink in there. And we, we I, well, I don't know if everybody knows this, but there's definitely been articles on people getting ink poisoning from the tattoos. You got from the tattoos, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, people don't even know about that type of stuff. Especially if you use, like, multiple needles and people share needles, get hepatitis on that garbage. Like, that's madness, bro. Give me that. So this is the, works for, the word for marks. is Strong's H7085. It says, uh, qua, qua aqua. And it says incision, imprintment, tattoo, or mark. That's in the Hebrew. So why don't they have? Why don't they uh, uh, follow this particular law? Even Israelites. People don't even. What's that? Because the mark is branded. Yeah, go ahead. It says, and this is in the uh, lexicon. It says a stigma, a mark branded on the skin. A mark branded on the skin. That's what a tattoo is. And, and, and if you go into the word stigma, it literally means. Uh, uh, I, watch, I'll show you the uh, stigma. It literally means something visible. So it got to be a tattoo. Yeah. Watch this. This is, this, is, this is what stigma is. It's a mark of disgrace associated with the particular circumstances, quality, or person. Uh, in Christian tradition, uh, uh, marks corresponding to those left on the body of Jesus. But I want to see the etymology. Go ahead. This is, this is the etymology, right? It says stigma was borrowed from Latin stigma, stigma meaning mark, brand, and ultimately comes from the Greek design, meaning to tattoo. Wow. That's crazy, man. I'm seeing right here also, and it goes into the Greek also, it's a mark made by, by a pointed instrument, a dot. Wow, that's crazy. A, a mark... Pointed by, by a pointed instrument? What? You heard that, sir. We're talking about tattoos. No tattoos. So, oh, you, thought you, oh, you thought I was calling you a mark, Elder? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was calling you a mark or what? Nah, he just a scoffer. He's a scoffer. That just caught my attention. Yeah, we we talking about tattoos and how wicked it is to get tattoos. Because it's a sin against God. No, no tattoos, brother. Yeah, there's some clean shoes. So I like them shoes too. That's right. That's right. You got it, brother. You repent, brother. But we love you, man. But yeah, with that, I'm going to close out. Give all praise, honor, and glory to your hour. By Shem, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai. And say Shalom, man.